always like on these crazy deadlines and I kept dreaming that I had like 250 pieces of a chandelier on the floor that I had to weld up. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute, there's no chandelier. There's no project right now, yeah. wake up. And I made myself wake up, I go right back into that dream. And I kept waking up and going to sleep and waking up and going, that's not true. You're all right, you already did it, you know what I mean? I've done that. I thought I was work I had to do and I didn't, you know, I was like. You know, I think sometimes dreams, you're so active in your dreams that they wear you out when you wake up. Oh yeah, yeah. You're just tired. Beat you to death, man. Right? It's funny, yeah, sure. Sure? Yeah, always. Okay. Welcome to Rick's Corner. I got Sasha Mitchell back. He's got a huge viewing audience. I didn't realize it until I put this up. But the man's done so many things, and he's so modest about it that I thought it would be interesting to talk to you again. Thank you. So thank you, Sasha, for coming back. Now, we talked about a lot of stuff last time about some of the shows you did and your training and your career and your hobbies and your passions. But, you know, you uh, one of your first acting gigs, gigs, was it Dallas or Step by Step? Uh, Dallas was first. The first. Yeah, I was like on a couple of movies and TV shows first, but then... Uh, yeah, that was the big one. Yeah, that was big casting part for like four years. And you were thin. Er. Yeah, I was younger, thinner. Yeah. Well, yeah, younger, of course. Younger, <laughs> thinner, but, but, faster. All right, okay. So thin, thin. what was your weight now then compared to now? Um, I was like 180, 190. And now? Couldn't get any bigger. Now like 230, 240. Yeah, because... Um, I remember people coming in the gym saying, my God, you're the same guy, you're huge now. Because you are. I mean, you gained a lot of weight. Yeah. But back then when you were acting, was your goal to work out and gain size? Is that what you wanted to do? Well, my whole life. Seriously? Seriously. I think, um, yeah, for sure. I think we talked about that before. The first thing I ever did bought in my life as a, like adult, functioning adult, like when I was 14, yeah. I was working at Gelson's. I bought a weight bench right. from Babo Matsu okay. at, at Busybody. Um, like that was the first thing I ever bought in my life. You know, and then I, you know, I was like three hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, I'd saved up back in groceries, and uh, my father took me over there, and I bought it. And he's like, "Well, how much weight you want?" And I was like, it "Doesn't come with weight, you know." <laughs> now you gotta buy weights. Yeah. It came with hundred and ten pound barbell sets. Came with nothing. No, if you want to buy a weight, it's 110 pound barbells. I don't right. know why 110. Yeah. Why not 100, 120 pounds? Right. 110. Yeah, my dad, like, he, he put in the same amount I put into the bench. He put in the weight, so I was good. But, yeah, no, I always wanted to get a little bit bigger. You know, I grew really fast. So I was, like, six foot one and, like, 135 pounds when I was, like, 13, 12. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I wound, I topped off, I think, at 6'3". But um, I was really thin. So I put on about 10 pounds a year um, until... You know, through my 30s. When I got to be about 30, my body slowed down a lot, and I got to put on the size. Yeah, that's what happens. Yeah, you know. You know, I mean, I talked about some of this before, but I'm going to refresh people's minds. When when you did get into that and you started training, most people don't know where to begin. They just start doing exercises. Mm. Did you have a clue what you were doing? Oh, yeah. You did? Yeah, I got I got Bob Kennedy's books, all of them. Oh, yeah, he had good stuff. Uh, yeah, I remember B-Fit and uh, Mass and the bodybuilding uh, Ripped. Remember those three sure, big books? Sure, I do. Man, I read those like, you know, every day, every night, all the time. When he came out with a new one, I read that six times. I wrote articles for him. You did? Yeah, I yeah. had my last email before he passed away. He paid me 600 for an article. Wow, yeah. Good guy, really good guy. Amazing books on reps and sets and yes. muscle breakdown yes. and what you can do. And you watch like everybody doing these exercises. He'd have pictures of like uh, Sergio Oliva, Serge Nubre, like, yeah. all these guys just like doing everything he's teaching you. You know, and uh, was diet laid out for you as well? Yeah. What to eat? No, but you know, I mean, we were just like we were so stupid back then. My friends and I used to cycle like five canyons a night. Over here, like in in yeah. LA, you got like Laurel Canyon, Nichols Canyon, Coldwater Canyon. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We thought we'd do five canyons a night eating bananas and pancakes. And, <laughs> like, you know, we'd be in the Tour de France one day. You yeah. know, we were just like stupid, but we just fun though. Yeah, I just always ate. Yeah, no yeah, matter what. Ton. Yeah, no matter what, I ate a lot. What, when you were, when you, was this after Dallas? What? Your training? No, since I was a kid, way before Dallas. It was, but you were, you weren't heavy on Dallas, though. So. No, I was about one eighty. Okay, 90. in good shape. Yeah, then after always. That, after that, you went to step by step. Yeah. Did you get? Were you bigger by then? 
I don't think I know. I never really got bigger till after I was like 30. Did any, that was all in my 20s. All right. Did anybody say anything about you having muscle back then that it didn't fit the role or you might watch out, don't get too big? Because we had this problem in the 70s. A lot of us guys went out as bodybuilding roles and they said, you know what? You only fit one category. You're too big. We can't put you in anything normal because you're too mm, big. Yeah. You had that happen? You, well, people were like, don't get too big. Your neck, don't get too big. You yeah. Know? Like your traps, don't train too hard. You know, and like, uh, but I just worked out. There was nothing I could do to get bigger. I just could not get any bigger. Yeah. Actually, what happened, you know, I got um, I got in an accident and um, hurt my head, like with a windshield yeah. of a car. I cracked my head on a windshield. I was going to get um, asthma medicine for my daughter. It was like a big, long, drawn-out story. You probably don't want to hear. I don't know. But, um, yeah, and it actually um, messed up my pituitary gland in the middle of my head. Seriously? Uh, yeah, because they say, you know, like, like fighters like getting hit and kicked in the head mm -hmm. or a, like a severe trauma to your head. Like, I don't know if you can see, there's like a big scar right Let's see down, down, the thing there. Yeah. down the side. Yeah. The rest of them go across, that one goes down. Yeah. You know? And uh, yeah, I cracked my head open really bad. Oh boy. I was working on a farm in uh, Tennessee and I saw like this twister come in the field that I was in, but it was like 500 acre fields. I drove the other way back to the farmhouse grab my kids and put them in the basement and uh, I did and then of course you know like uh, I got on the phone you know the guy that owned the farm was telling me somebody wanted to talk to me he was actually my lawyer for the custody of the kids and I got on the phone with him and then my daughter came up to me Caroline and she said she had uh, was having an asthma attack and I just got her like asthma yeah that day and uh, she said um, that her teacher Miss Smith had taken it from her so I had to go could jump in the truck to go get her uh, her one at our house where we were living not the farmhouse but yeah. our house and by the time I got up there man that twister had caught up to where we were at and it dragged me like the rest of the way up this driveway across the two lane and into a cornfield embankment unbelievable cracked my head open I, yeah I didn't really think anything about it you know it was like a F-350 with 38 inch wheels yeah and I didn't think anything had to do with my head or anything. I just like put it in four wheel drive, got out of the field, went over to my house, got the medicine, gave it to her, went up on the hill and got stitched up. And then uh, I think my dad was it that came out to visit me and uh, I put him on the combine and we were going around, you know, shelling corn and he started coughing. And uh, um, he had gotten like corn talc in his lungs. You know, when you combine corn, there's all yeah. that white powder in the air, like yeah. the corn starch. And uh, he went back to L.A. and he went to some doctors and they found like a big tumor, you know, in his back. And uh, so then I flew out with my kids. I wanted uh, to donate blood for him. And the guy was like, you know, are you tired much? Like, is there anything wrong with you? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, dude, I got four kids. One of them's a baby. I'm a single yeah. dad. Of course I'm tired much. Yeah. He's like, no, 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 really, seriously. I'm like, dude, I could drink like a double espresso and go right to sleep. He's like, no, because you don't make any testosterone, you know, like the car accident, like cracking your head open. I guess yeah. it messed me up. Crazy. Yeah. You okay now though? Yeah. You know, it's just normal. Yeah. I guess, you know, just to get you to a normal level. You still check your levels? <clears throat> yeah. yeah, but the thing was, it, it slowed my body down so much, I started gaining weight. That's where I got, uh, you know, more size. So if I didn't work out, I would just be a big fat shit. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. When you got into, uh, after you did these shows, you got step by step, and you were training, there was something there that triggered you to go into martial arts. No, it was way before that. Was you it? Know, I was actually, like, when I was in New York in military school, you know, we used to go uh, train boxing, like at the PAL. Yeah. You know, and so everybody trains boxing there. And right. then um, when I started working in TV and movies and stuff, I was out here, I started training with Benny Akitas. Yeah, sure. Sensei Ben um, was my teacher forever. And then he put me with Shuki, Shuki Ron. You know, so he's like Mijo Jim style Thai boxing from Holland. Those guys, you know, bigger, taller guys. Right. So it was kind of a different hip movement than Sensei Benny. Yeah. Um, but I trained with Ben first for like forever, like 10 years, and then Shuki, you know, another 10. I still see Ben over at Go Course. Yeah. He's we just, uh, I did an interview with Gina Bell like three weeks ago. Did you really? It was exclusive. They called me in the host and I said, sure. And then Benny was there, Go Course was there. Good. Everybody was there, and it was just a really nice evening. I love Gene. Oh, he's awesome. And it's a nice gym they have. Yeah, it's beautiful. He, yeah. I remember getting in the ring with him he said you were gonna do some wind exercises <laughs> oh man yeah what, what yeah. happened well you know because we train with benny we wear shorts only yeah you know and when you train with gene i guess you wear one of those the gi gi yeah and i never had one on in my life you know it was like always just fighting it's like and, a bathroom uh, yeah he put it on me and he got on top of me and he's like all right get up you know and i was like 20 so i'm sitting there and i'm i'm trying to get out from under him and i'm trying to get out and then i you know how retarded people are I, I figured get up means just get up so I grabbed him and I grabbed him around his leg and I stood up I just squatted him 
You know, because I knew I That's pretty it. hard to do. He's, he's not like, light. Yeah, no, he's not light, but he said, get up. So I got up. And then as soon as I got up, I went to go get air, and he used that bathrobe gee thing to choke me out. So That's him. Choked me right out, man. That's Gene. Dude, I look over, I see my dead relatives, like, over by the ring. I was like, Grandma. Yeah. You know, he doesn't, st he doesn't talk about the Steven Seagal thing, but you know about that. I heard about it from yeah. uh, Jeff Moven. Yeah, that he choked him out on the set. Yeah. But Gene's tough. He's a tough guy. He is. Now, this led you, um, where did you get your first start into the martial arts? Because you've done a lot of films. With Ben. No, with Benny. With ben. the films. Yeah. Through him and Art Camacho? Art Camacho also. Yeah, I did. Uh, remember we were talking about Art last time? Yeah. I was in here. Art's done like a whole bunch of movies. Even that one that we mentioned that was The Chemist. Mm -hmm. He had just started that. Right after we were talking about it, I guess he saw your piece and he called me up and threw me in that. I'm going next weekend to New York uh, for the premiere of that movie. He actually threw me in that movie. So you actually finished it? Yeah. Did you see yeah. it yet? No. I'm going to see it next weekend. What's it called? York. The Chemist. What's your role? Yeah. Um, you know, it's kind of funny. Like, in the movie, there's a whole movie going on. Um, like, a murders and killers and, you know, intrigue. And then I guess, like, in the background, there's uh, a poker game going on during the whole movie from the very beginning to the very end and then at the very end you reveal who it is that's talking but I guess it's like the poker game guys that are really setting the plot oh. and planning the murders and the killings and what's actually going on in the movie did our producers and directed as well yeah. yeah he's a sharp guy yeah he's amazing yeah, I he love is. working with him he started as a coordinator right yeah yeah and then he just started doing his own films yeah choreographer coordinator you know he's like in the Black Belt Hall of Fame he's amazing and even off of that you know I went uh, with Olivier and we did this other one executive protection that was like I guess what he's been doing like for 10 years like protecting these like rich guys in uh, mm -hmm. in Vegas and flying helicopters around so he decided to make a movie about it interesting he threw me in there and then the first AD um, Asif he was doing uh, another movie like Marines in the Middle East and he threw me in that so just off like speaking with you I got like four other roles of these guys calling me up it was from really watching this yeah that's amazing because Art saw it and then yeah. Art called me up he's like hey come on brother you know, so he threw me in the movie. So this is pretty good. So you had to go outside the country to do these, or no? No, they were all right here. Like okay. a couple of them were up in, uh, um, you know, the park off Gorman. Oh sure, uh, Fraser Park. Oh yeah, yeah Fraser Park, and then you know, all yeah, over you, that, you like, can find a location here that yeah. looks like everything in the world. Yeah. Did you think because last time we talked, you were just working, you were doing some computer work and some welding, and, and really not much acting, and you know, it comes and goes. You get yeah. It, and it comes and goes. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you got these. But are you inspired to go ahead and make your career advance again, or just are you happy with what you're doing? No, I love it. I mean, acting's great, and you know, if you can make people laugh or you can teach somebody a story, you know, I love yeah. doing that. I yeah. really do, you know, and uh, I wish I could do it. I just, you know what it was? I think for so many years raising my kids, I just didn't really stop and ask for work. So it was always like like this. It was like a guy named a guy like Art would call me, hey, go in this, and then Olivia, hey, get it put in this. I've been doing movies all this time, but always just ones that people that knew me would just call me up to do. That's how it works. But yeah, then even subsequently there was a official like go see, you know, and reading, and then I got the movie and I did the part, and it was like some funny midlife crisis movie. Now those are those yeah. you know I had those with major too, but you, you know Fred Ray, Fred and Ray, who he, he used Art and he used. Uh, Oh God, he used Don Wilson in a ton of films. Oh, I like him. And Fred had done a lot of action films like that. I trained him to wrestle, and so in the meantime, he put me in his movies, put me in 12 films. Fred Williamson? Fred what? Fred Ray. Fred oh. Olin Ray, the oh. director, oh. and he produces. And so I got 12 psych films out of him, playing different characters, different roles, and it, this is how it works. You go, hey, I got something. I got three days over here. I got a right. week over there, and uh, that's how it works usually because people contact me about wrestling they contact about film when they watch the show and people want to move out here they want to become actors they want to become wrestlers and I understand yeah, that yeah. but you know looking back at it now I wouldn't change anything I've done and I know you wouldn't either but what do you tell somebody that wants to start in this it's like a, it's a it's a hard call yeah you know you want to do it do it but it's not easy no it's not easy and you know like I would tell somebody be half an hour early don't be on time <laughs> work as hard as you can I don't grumble about anything being yeah. late staying late you know like uh, that happens a lot of times you know people they, they get into a position and they start getting upset I think that's what happened with uh, Steven Seagal and Gene LaBelle you know this guy was in this position and started just mouthing off about things yeah I know Gene would never hurt anybody but I think it had something to do with Aaron Aaron and Chuck you know, and then Gene's like, you shouldn't talk about my friends like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, I think what I would say is stay humble, be early, yeah. work hard, 
Yeah. You know, love everybody you meet. Try as hard as you can. Yeah. It's it's not a bad business. It's actually a really good business to be in. It's, it is. Uh, I know. mean, I get results from things I did 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. And they keep coming about. But but um, back in the day when we were doing, we were bodybuilders, and bodybuilders were limited to what you could do. Nowadays, everybody's in good shape. Yeah, I mean, look at look at look at the Rock, man. He just did that movie, yeah. uh, San Andreas Fault. Yeah. San Andreas, he's gigantic. He's like bigger than both of us put together. But he's an exception. The man's very talented. Yeah, and very likable, and and very good at what he does. And there's not a lot of people like that. I mean, Arnold had done it on his personality charisma. There's a lot of big guys I'd see in auditions, and they would think all I got to walk and do is flex. And no, that's not it. No, you got to have more than that. Well, look at Michael Clark Duncan. There's yeah. some big guys out there who could act pretty well, right? Could act, act right. well. It's changed a lot. Yeah. Um, what's your plans for the future? I'm just gonna keep hitting it. <laughs> I'll never get out of the gym the rest of my life. You no, know, I'm gonna no. be I'm be there with you forever. Yeah. And uh, no, I'm still going on interviews and seeing about movies. I guess there's a couple coming up. Art said he's got another one planned. Um, and he's got a part in there he wants to throw me in. And Yaakov Bresler, you know him from, uh, he's the Krav Maga like, uh, representative. Oh, I know that is yeah. yeah, he's a really good guy. He said he had one going down in Mexico. So, who Have knows? you worked with Michael Dudikoff? No. I did a movie with him when he was popular. He was a nice guy. We had we had a good time, but you know, there's a lot of people like that around. And of course, Don Wilson done a million films. Yeah, I love Don. Don's a great guy. I've had him on here as well. And Cynthia Rothrock, you know, I both I, of them. I called her. I called Cynthia Rothrock about doing the show. She's yep. Yeah, call me in a couple of months. I'm going away. I would love to do it. She, you know, I saw, I met her at a party and I refreshed her memory. She's really pretty. Yeah, she's really. She nice. got better with age. Yeah, she's amazing. She is. She got better with age. What a good looking yeah. woman. Yeah, and they're always together. I think they're doing a tour about that Karate Kid movie they did. Yes, Karate Kid. That's right. Not Karate Kid. Yeah, that's... something like that. And, and then his brother Jim's involved. Yeah, James. James. Yeah, I love him. He's, He's a great guy too. Yeah. Um, so uh, your training now is what? How many days a week? Every day. Do you, do you have any specific day. thing you do when you go in? You just hit what you feel. Oh no. Well, I mean, it depends on how crowded it is. Yeah. Like what I'll do is. Yeah, it depends on what I did yesterday and what I want to do tomorrow the next right. day. Like, I can't, you know. But if it's crowded on one body part, I'll move to another body part and just do something else. But yeah. basically, I do, it takes me four days to get through my whole body. Okay. So I'll do, like, you know, like legs, and the next day that you can do anything. But it yeah, you just pick chest yeah. and tries and then back and uh, maybe buys and then shoulders alone and then legs again. The other day I was supposed to do legs. My legs are kind of beat up from my knees and thought, I don't really feel like doing legs today, so I did chest and back. Yeah. So I felt like doing it. And then because I felt like doing it, it was a good workout. Right. And then the next day I did legs and I felt like doing it, it was a good workout. Yeah. You pick something you enjoy that day. I didn't never used to do that. I used to stick to the rule. You know, this is yeah. there, this is here, this is here. But I swapped days and a day off in between and it yeah. seemed to work okay. Oh, it does. It always does because it makes you hungry for it. People are like, oh, I've been out of the gym for a week. It's like, no, that's great. If you go every day and you never miss a day, yeah. you might just like think you've done it all already yeah. and not be so hungry to do it. Yeah. If you think you jumped off it one day and now you're here and you can really, or like if you're dying to do a body part and you, you didn't do it, you don't let yourself, yeah. and then on that day you're allowed to do it, man, you'll tear it up. It's exactly true. Tear it up Otherwise you're overtrained. Yeah. Um, where can people find you on the internet if they want to write to you or see you or whatever? You have a Facebook? Yeah. I got a Facebook and there's a picture of my son and I on my Facebook. I know there's like about eight that have Sasha Mitchell, but like the one that's uh, the real one is, yeah. My son and I, I think, are the uh, picture. And then there's, uh, I'm a Gmail, Sasha727. Okay. And I think I got a YouTube channel, man, but there's only like two videos up there. Yeah, well, I'm gonna find that. I'm gonna post that on here. All right, okay. We talked about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about Twitter, no? Uh, yes, yeah, Sasha, just my name, Sasha Mitchell. At Twitter, uh, yeah, at I think Sasha it's a, Mitchell. I think it's one name. Oh yeah, at Sasha Mitchell. Okay. Um, uh, you Twitter or anything. I'm gonna write even Instagram, Sasha Mitchell. Because you're everywhere there. Yeah, but I don't, I don't, I know Facebook better than I know the other ones. Yeah, but well, I, that's one most, that's the most common. Well, a lot of the kids use Instagram. My daughter uses Instagram. Oh, you gotta have Instagram, it goes yeah. everywhere. And if you do Instagram, it also, you can program it to go to Twitter, to Facebook, and all over the place. Yeah, it'll publish everywhere. Exactly. You know? But it's like, it's funny, because Facebook, man, like I went to so many different high schools. I went to different, like, different high school every year. Yeah. And so I've got friends from elementary school and high schools in New York and everywhere yeah. that I ever went. And you find them on Facebook, not really so much Instagram and Twitter. You know, they don't find you. No, 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 no. That's just it's yeah. a general thing you should do. You know that um, fun. You know that I did the original Goals t-shirt. 
Yeah, yeah, the drawing. I yeah, well, I want. I don't know if you know this, but I have a website called Rick Grayson Originals for all of you out there, and it has all my designs on, all my Muscle Beach stuff, and all these fantastic colors with tank tops. And so if you want to order direct, if you go to rickgraysonoriginals.com, you can order on the website, and from people telling me they're ordering it, getting it shipped out the same day to get it back in two days, wow. which is pretty good. Yeah, that's amazing. So go on there and take a look and uh, do what you want. Well, it's a pleasure that you stopped by. I know you're a busy man. Nah, man, I'm not. And I want to thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It's always me. a pleasure having you. And you guys, stay tuned for Sasha's movies. They're going to be out. just in four. I'll probably do four more by the next time he's out to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys, see you next time on Rick's Corner. Stay tuned. RickDrayson.com. He is the equalizer, baby. See you next time.